Good afternoon everyone. I am Vinita Singh Patel of 59th batch and the today's topic for anatomy seminar is arches of food. Introduction. Footprints are not complete due to the arches of food. Arches of the food help in fast walking, running, jumping and they also help in weight bearing and in providing upright posture. Arches are supported by both intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the sole in addition to ligaments, aponeurosis and the shape of the bones. The foot has to suffer from many disorders because of tight shoes or high heels. The foot has to act as a pliable platform to support the body weight in the upright posture and as a lever to propel the body forwards in walking, running or jumping. The human foot is designed in the form of elastic arches or springs which are segmented so that they can best sustain the stresses of weight and of thrusts. The presence of arches make the sole concave. Footprints show the weight-bearing parts of sole like heel, the lateral border of foot, ball of little toe, ball of great toe. The arched foot is a distinctive feature of man which distinguishes him from other primates. Now we will see the classification of arches. There are two types of arches, longitudinal and transverse. Longitudinal is of further two types, medial and lateral. Then there are transverse arches which are of two types, anterior and posterior. Now we will see the anterior transverse arch. The anterior transverse arch is formed by the heads of five metatarsal bones. It is a complete arch because the heads of the first and the fifth metatarsals come in contact with the ground and they form the two ends of the arch. This arch lies in the coronal plane. During the weight bearing, the metatarsal heads flatten out. In the diagram, you can see this is the first metatarsal, this is the fifth metatarsal and this is the head of all the five metatarsals and they are forming the anterior transverse arch. This arch is supported by intermetatarsal ligaments and the intrinsic muscles of the sole. The transverse head of adductor hallucis holds the heads of metatarsals together. These are the deep transverse metatarsal ligaments which are holding the metatarsal joints in and help in forming the anterior transverse arch. Now we will see the posterior transverse arch. The posterior transverse arch is formed by the greater parts of the tarsus and the basis of metatarsus. Now here we can see this arch is formed by three cuneiforms and the cuboid. This is an incomplete arch because only the lateral end comes in contact with the ground and the arch is forming a half dome and it is completed by a similar half dome of the opposite foot. Here in the diagram this is the half dome of one foot and this is the half dome of the other and they together make a complete arch. This arch extends across the sole in a coronal plane. This arch is supported by the ligaments binding the bones. It gets specific support from the tendon of peroneus longus as it extends from the lateral side to the medial side of the sole. Here in the bone we can see this is the metatarsal and these are the heads of the metatarsal and they are adjoined to form the anterior transverse arch. These are the three cuneiforms and the cuboid and some part of navicular and they together form the posterior transverse arch along with the bases of the five metatarsals. Now we will compare the anterior and the posterior transverse arches. So formation, the heads of first to fifth metatarsal is forming the anterior transverse arch, while the navicular three cuneiform bones, the bases and shafts of metatarsals form the posterior transverse arch. The features, this is a complete arch, while this is an incomplete arch and the half dome concept we can see here. Bony factor, the anterior transverse arch is round shaped 
while the posterior transverse arch is wedge shaped and actually the shape of the metatarsals help in supporting this arch intersegmental ties dorsal interosseous muscles dorsal interosseous muscle in both the arches tie beams adductor hallucis and deep transverse metatarsal ligaments for the anterior transverse arch and flexor hallucis brevis and the intertarsal and tarso metatarsal ligaments for the posterior transverse arch slings peroneus longus and tibialis posterior for anterior transverse arch and peroneus longus and tibialis posterior again for the posterior transverse arch thank you